Today we're going to show you how to change the polarizing film on these 84 through 89 Corvette LCD panels. Beside the LCD panels we see the restoration kit. It includes new films for all three panels. It includes some paint and a paintbrush just in case the paint on the back side of these LCDs needs to be retouched. And it includes some razor blades to scrape off the old film. Step number one is to remove the old polarizing film. The polarizing film is a layer on the top side of the panel. This is the side without the graphics. If we turn the panel over, we see the factory markings. This is the back side of the panel, and this should never be removed. This is the front side of the panel, and this is the side of the panel that we're going to work on. I'm going to start with one of the razor blades. I'm going to be very careful not to cut toward myself or to delaminate the two layers of glass. I'm only lifting the very top layer of film away from this panel. Now once I get that started, I should be able to lift it away. That's actually working in this case. Sometimes when the panels have baked in the sun for years and years, uh, this film will be much more difficult to remove. And if it is, you might need more razor blades than we include in the kit. You should be able to find single edge razor blades in any nearby hardware store, Walmart, that sort of place. So once we've removed that film, we have a rough layer of uh, what is basically glue residue. So we're gonna scrape that away. Okay. And we'll continue on until all of that glue residue is gone. We need an absolutely clean and clear glass panel in order to install the new film. That's looking pretty good. We have a couple more steps left in the cleaning process. The first one is going to be that I'm going to take my razor blade and I'm going to scrape around the edges. What this does is it basically removes any old dried paint from the edges. It keeps it from getting loose and contaminating the new fresh surface. I still see some glue, so I'm going to continue on the scraping process. If you see any glue, if you feel any glue, it definitely needs to come off before we try to apply the new film. Next, I'm going to use some paper towels and uh, glass cleaner. This is, uh, this is basically Windex without the blue coloring in it. I got it at Walmart. I'm going to spray that on the top side of the panel. I'm going to take a different razor blade. This is maybe razor blade number two in the kit. And I'm going to do a wet scraping on the panel. Applying the glass cleaner reduces the friction just a little, little bit and lets the, um, lets the razor blade do a better job of cleaning the surface. Okay. All right, I'm going to do a visual inspection on this. Still see a little bit of glue residue down in the corner. Okay. While I'm working with these panels, I want to make sure the other two panels are way away from this panel. And I want to make sure they're away from each other. We definitely don't want them to hit on the edges. It is very easy to crack and destroy a panel just by, just by clicking into another panel. I'm using a dry paper towel just to make sure that we don't have any glue residue left. If we have any glue residue and I'm using a dry paper towel, it will tend to show up as a white marking on the surface. 
I don't see any of that here. Next, I'm going to use an air duster in order to get rid of uh, any of the uh, paper towel debris. I've taken the film out of the package. And if we look, it's got a label that says this side up, it should be installed in this orientation. What that's saying is don't install it this way. Don't install it this way, install it this way. In order to make the film more flexible, we're gonna remove the protective layer from the top side first. I'm just gonna set that down so we remember which orientation to install the panel. Next, I'm going to use my air duster again. Get rid of anything that's settled on the panel. If I have another razor blade standing by, I can do a final cleaning on it. So the, the film was in this orientation. I'm gonna flip that over. I'm going to peel back one corner of the protective layer. I'm gonna flip it again so that the glue is, um, the glue that's been released is down. Dust it off one final time. Then I'm gonna line up the film on the bottom of the panel, press it into place. If I'm using a roller to install the film, I'll roll that in place. And that looks good. If we see any air spots, if we see any air bubbles underneath, it is possible to gently lift this film and roll it back down again. But in our case, that was not necessary. If any dust gets trapped under the film, the likelihood is it will get stuck in the glue and be there forever. If you run into problems, contact us. We'll do whatever we can to help you out. Other methods of applying the film are using your finger, using a squeegee intended for applying vinyl decals. We found that the roller method works best. The rollers really aren't that expensive and um, they really make this job easy. We've used that method here in the shop for the last seven years and it works great. If you need a roller, you can find these on the web store at betty.com. Next, we're gonna take one of our old razor blades and we're going to trim the panel. I'm gonna turn that sideways so that you can see what I'm doing here. Basically, I'm holding the razor blade at a 45 degree angle to the glass and I'm just trimming away. I'm, I'm trimming the film flush. Okay, and I'm gonna do that for all four sides. Okay, it wasn't hanging over on that side. Be careful with the scraps, they are quite sharp. So next we wanna inspect our work. We wanna make sure that the, the new film is not overhanging the, the glass panel anywhere. During this process, we wanna make very sure that we do not scrape at a 90 degree angle to the glass with our razor blade. The reason for that is that on one side of each of these panels, uh, there is uh, a little bit of glue. The, the glue is actually a, uh, a plug where the liquid crystal is installed in these panels. We don't want to cut that plug away. We want to be very careful not to do that. So we're at all times we're cutting at a 45 degree angle, not, not flush with the panel. Okay, and this one looks good. So we're going to set that aside. We're going to do the same process with these next two panels. We are lucky the film is releasing cleanly, not leaving a bunch of scraps behind and it came off in one piece. Next, we will clean off the glue residue. We'll do our wet scraping on this panel. When I'm working with these paper towels, I'll fold them into eighths. When the panel looks and feels clean, 
we're going to go ahead and do a final cleaning with a razor blade. We'll do a final cleaning with a dry paper towel just to make sure we haven't left any glue residue behind. I actually see some right here. So I'm going to go back with a razor blade and get that. Okay, so I'm going to install the center panel film in this orientation. Uh, the arrow points to the top side of this panel, so it's going to go on just like that. I'm going to peel off the top side protective layer and just stick that on my bench so that I remember which way it goes. I'm going to turn the film and the panel so that I can install it a little bit easier. And again, I'm going to use my air duster to get rid of any paper towel residue. I'm going to peel that protective layer back and turn the panel over. And I'm going to use a clean razor blade to do a final scraping. Get rid of any dust that's left on this panel. One final dusting off. Then I'll line up the left edge, seal it with my finger, and we'll apply that with the roller. And again, that looks great. Right here at the edge, I see some air bubbles. Um, that's fairly typical where I, I stuck it down with my finger. So I'm just going to work those air bubbles out before I reinstall this. And again, I'm going to use an old razor blade. I'm going to cut at a 45 degree angle to the glass. And I'm just going to trim that film flush with the edge of the panel. Okay. And we'll do the same thing here. And here. We'll get that end. Okay. We get that end. And again, we're going to be careful with these scraps. They are quite sharp. They'll easily poke under a fingernail and give you a bad day. While the uh, polarizing film is off, it's a great time to retouch the paint on the back side of these panels. Uh, if we take a look at this panel, we can see several spots where the paint where the paint has touched the color filter and vibrations have just worn this uh, this paint off over time. Um, if it's in the area of the graphics, it's going to be much more difficult to retouch. But typically it's around the edges and it's fairly easy to retouch. The kit includes a paintbrush and some black paint for this purpose. We've done hundreds of these in the shop and one thing that we've learned is that um, while they're not always available. These black paint markers, and this is not a Sharpie, this is not a, an ink of any kind, this is an actual marker that puts down paint. It has a fine tip on it. I got it at Walmart. They're, again, they're not always available. If you can get your hands on one of these, it's much easier to use than the paint that we supply. I would highly recommend doing it this way instead of the, instead of with the brush. We're just going to apply some paint everywhere we see that it's worn through. If you hold this up to a light, the places that have worn through are much more obvious. Be careful when you're working near the openings. Uh, we don't want to get paint on those. Okay. If you do get paint on the areas that uh, should remain uncovered, you can always use a paper towel and some alcohol to remove the paint and then try your, try your retouching again. Sometimes areas are large enough in size 
that it takes two or three applications in order to completely cover it, but we definitely want to do this. Any area where the paint is worn away that it shouldn't be will allow light from the light diffusers to show through. It will become very obvious at night if we don't do this step. And we're just going to set that aside to dry. We don't want to continue on until the until this paint has dried. The next step is to turn the panel over and we don't want the we don't want this paint sticking to our bench. We don't want it sticking to the color filter when we reassemble this instrument panel. When we restore these panels, they should look completely black. Um, the panels do look semi-glossy under this uh, this weird lighting that we're using to film the under this weird camera lighting that we're using but uh, in person but in person that panel looks like it has the factory matte finish the panel looks almost completely black when all of the segments are off when the segments turn on the panel becomes clear and again I'll, I'll just show you this the center panel it looks a bit glossy under the lighting that we're using that completes the process of installing polarizing film on these 84 through 89 Corvette LCD panels. Okay, I want to talk to you for a second about replacement panels. Here in the shop, every once in a while, we see an instrument panel that has had its LCD panels replaced. Uh, it happens when they break, it happens when they wear out. What we see is a factory panel on the left. We, we can clearly see the factory markings. Here we see a replacement panel. The replacement pan this is the back side of the replacement panel, except that it's more of a glossy finish. And it's it's much more difficult to see the factory markings. The replacement panels aren't all made by the same person. Um, every once in a while, uh, the replacement panels uh, come with polarizing film applied in a different orientation. So it's possible if you have replacement panels that our film kit may not work for you. Uh, when you apply the film, the panel may, may remain clear. If that happens, we can still help. Just please contact us and we'll arrange to have you ship us the panel. We'll custom cut a piece of film that will work on your panel and there's no extra charge for that. My name is Brian Thompson and I founded the website Batty.com where you can find more free information and videos to fix Corvette electronics. You can also find the parts and tools you see us using in the videos. Thanks to your support, I'm proud to say that 10 Americans have jobs. Hi friends, 20 years of experience can make these repairs look easier than they really are. But don't worry, we have your back. If you're not getting the results you see here, then stop and pack it up and send it to us. We have the parts, the tools, and the experience needed to do the job right.